Patrick Fendaro here, co-founder at Visa Franchise. Today, I'm going to go through the top two E2 Visa requirements for 2022. So first off, what passport do you have? What's your citizenship or what's the citizenship of your spouse? If you're not a citizen of a country that has the E2 Visa Treaty, then you're not going to be eligible to apply for the E2 Visa Treaty right now. You or your spouse, one of you can be the investor and the other one is able to get the E2 visa. Your kids don't even have to have the same nationality. As long as you're married and either you or your spouse does the investment and applies for the E2 visa using a passport that does have the E2 visa treaty with the United States, then you can apply for the E2 visa and the whole family will be able to have the benefits of the E2 visa. Um, however, if you don't have the E2 visa citizenship, your spouse doesn't have the E2 visa citizenship, you can get it through Ancestry. Uh, we have a lot of clients, for example, in Brazil, Venezuela, that got the E2 visa country citizenship through Ancestors. They had a grandfather, a great-grandfather that was Italian or from Spain, uh, from an, another country that's eligible for the E2 visa, and they get the citizenship that way. So they apply as a dual national. Or we have more and more clients that are doing citizenship through investment. So they'll invest in a country like Grenada or in, in Turkey. Both of those countries have the E2 visa with the United States. And they use that dual nationality with Grenada, with Turkey, to then make an investment and apply for the E2 visa. So the investment, that brings me to the second most important point, the E2 visa requirement, which is a substantiality requirement. How much you invest is important. And while there is no minimum, if you show up to your consulate interview and you invested $40,000, the interview is going to be tough without a doubt. Anything at lower than $100,000, in our experience, we've had well over 400 clients over the last seven years, anything over $100,000 is risky. Most attorneys are not willing to put the petition forward. If you're going to apply for make an investment that's could not be considered substantial. And there is no number, but a lot of consulate officers feel a little more comfortable when it's a hundred thousand dollars and that the investor shows that they spent money on, it could be the franchise fee, the real estate deposit. They have allocated working capital in the business, different professional advisory fees. If it's a business that you need a car, like real estate property management, or you're installing floors or windows, uh, and, and you have a franchise that's doing those type of, of installations, a truck, a car could potentially work as an investment. But the key is a substantiality that it needs to be enough money to get the business off the ground and hit profitability within that, that five-year period. Generally, you're doing a business plan for, for five years. So you got to work with your attorney on to see if the business you're interested in does in fact meet the substantiality requirement of the E2 visa. And before that, make sure go on the State Department uh, website. Make sure that your nationality, your 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 the citizenship that you have, or your spouse has, is eligible for for the E2 visa. Um, and if it's not eligible, maybe the E2 visa is not the best fit, or maybe. You you could see citizenship by investment or potentially citizenship by ancestry. And the ancestry route is generally a longer process of one to three years where citizenship by investment could be as little as three months, four months to acquire a second nationality that is eligible for the E2 visa. So again, two key E2 visa requirements, especially in 2022, substantiality of the investment, and you got to have a citizenship that qualifies for the E2 visa in the first place. Thanks.